Welcome to the Swap XLT Part 8. Alright, this time I'm going to do fuel stuff and details is going to supervise as you can see. He's the Farley Wrangler of the day. So um, here's what we got going. Um, fuel pump reeks of nasty old gas. It's coming apart. We're throwing away all these hoses and stuff. Uh, genuine Makuni kit for the fuel pump. Yeah. Uh, over here, I usually do this. I don't know if I show it on camera every time. But brand new needles and seats for these carbs and uh, everything else is pretty normal you saw the new throttle cable that's already hooked up to the oil pump so uh, I don't know we're just gonna blow this stuff apart run it through the uh, yeah that's why there's a new throttle cable I don't know if this will show up on the camera very well but uh, she's, pretty, afraid. she's pretty afraid this one's headed for the garbage can So we're going to blow stuff apart, send it through the, uh, the little cleaning unit. What is it? Ultrasonic. We're going to send it through the... Yeah, ultra you got a different name on it. The, Kid so the Carb Cooker 6000? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we'll send it through the Kid Sonic 6000 cleaner. <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, you know, we'll put stuff back together and sync up the carbs. And who knows how far we'll get this time. All right, we're out of the ultrasonic, and uh, you can see, I mean, these these bodies spent an hour in there. The bowl spent an hour and 15. I had to peel the floats off, save these little guys, and, and scrub the floats and under the floats and everything with the toothbrush to get it clean. Uh, ethanol's bad. Ethanol is bad for carburetors. So uh, came up with some jets. I'm going to throw in some 200s and the number 35 pilots, uh, really for the temperatures we got right now. I could even go, you know, as small as 190 right now, and um, stock is 210. So we're going to go with that. I'm going to get these things back together. All right, it's time to sync up the carbs. You can see I've got them all installed. I've got them nice and level across the top. got my cable. My cable will be about here with the air box on, so... I might constrain it down a little bit. I've got it up up all the way to the flipper. I've got my wire tie routing it. And I got a ton of slack. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start taking up the slack down here and uh, hope that there's enough take up. So uh, I'll bring you back later. I just wanna say we had a really, really detailed carb sinking video back on Brad's Ultra. So I'm going to put the card up in the corner here in case you want to go check that out. Uh, I'm not going to go through it all again because I just want to get this done. Well, I'm glad I decided not to film that whole uh, carb sinking thing because it pretty much had me pulling out my hair within the first three minutes. This cable needed to be, I'm trying to show you here, I've got it just flush with the threads and uh, it's adjusted all the way up it needs to be there and i still don't get full pull on the cable so uh you know i bought that thing from one of the online places and they said it fit this sled but uh, it seems more like it's a cable for 38s so back at the princeton swap where i bought this sled i also picked up a cable for five bucks so uh we're gonna give that a try success with the used cable so uh i'm getting full pull now even with uh even with it only adjusted part way up so that's a really good thing um got my throttle block kind of or not my throttle block whatever you call this block the slide block i got it bungeed about where it's going to be um and i'm going to sink the carbs like that should help match better when the air box is on and some of these are in the clip on top of the air box Got my carb synced, got my oil pump adjusted. Let me give you a quick look. I don't know how much you'll be able to see, but they're all coming up at the same time. 
And uh, I got the hash marks lined up at idle on the oil pump, so I'll give you a little picture there. All right, so everything's coming together, and uh, I'm just going to keep putting parts on, and it won't be long, and I'll be riding this thing. Just taking a little beer break. Been making a good pull on this sled. Have a look-see. You can see she's mostly together. Um, all the plumbing's done, except for obviously I have to put the gas tank on and connect it to the fuel shutoff here. All the wiring's done, except for plugging in the gas tank. Got the pipe on. Uh, the chain case is filled. I don't know, we're getting really close. I got to worry about the clutches next, and then I, I think it's actually going to be time to put the seat on and start the thing up. Here's the clutch that came off this sled, and she's a little worn out and sticky. I think I made a good call there. Well, I had a quick dig through the clutch box. Look at that! Brand new blue spring. I'm going to brand new setup, 10 M5, and of course the new clutch came with new pins. We're going all new, because if you had all new parts, why would you not go all new? Hi, John. Hey, Details. Thought I'd stop by, say hi, John. Yeah, and do some sled work. Sled work on my sled, sled work on your sled. Dennis has got, got to do needles and seats, too. It seems like I was just doing that on mine, oh, a few hours ago. So uh, we're going to let Dennis have at that. I'm going to continue on this. My next thing is to look at the secondary because why would you put on a brand new primary and not at least look at the secondary? Can you buy a new secondary? I, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen one for sale. I'll just check this one out. If I got to do some bushings, I'll show you how, but hopefully I don't have to. All right, blue or part, red spring and a straight 34. So basically stock calibration. I didn't even pay any attention to what hole it was wound up in. Inner bushing, the brass one down in there seems good. Outer bushing, I think I'm going to change it. That needs a little love, and I happen to have one on hand. So I uh, guess I'll show you how to do that. All right, I'm going to work over here so details can have the grandma's uh, antique coffee table to do his carbs on if you hear <laughs> if you hear some chatter in the background it's just details so first thing to do is get these bolts off get that little sheet metal cover off of there then these next four actually retain that bushing All right, so far so good. Dump the debris out. Now we got to figure out where the split is in the bushing. It's right over here. So I'm going to get a hammer and a sharp screwdriver and cave that bushing in. Ready? There we go. Couldn't be easier. All right, I'm going to go locate my new bushing. Part 356-9803. Going to hit this with the air gun, clean it up a little, and then we'll uh, Loctite that new bushing in. Alright, you're really supposed to use Loctite cylindrical retaining compound. It's green. I don't have any, so we're using red. And red works, and I've done it before with red, and it's been fine. fine. Really, they're pretty similar. Fail number two. Let's uh, let's put the helix in the middle of it this time.
Well, that is the deal. Put your helix in there. It's the first time I've done that helix trick, and uh, wow, that, that was way easier than it's ever worked before. All right, Helix came right out. It was just stuck a little bit because of this corrosion up here. Kind of craptastic, but our bushing's in. So uh, we're on the upside now. Basically, all we got to do is put these fasteners back in and put that, uh, put that windage tray back on, that windage plate, if you would. Bring you back when we're done. All right, clutches and a new belt installed. And uh, things are mostly together. Next step is to put on the seat, clean up all the mess, and pull the rope. Let's see if we got fire. Burping the cooling system. It's got the spill-proof funnel on there. Got the front end up, so uh, hopefully we'll run all the air out of the running board coolers. I don't know. We'll just run it and try after this, but it burped quite a bit out when I lifted up the front end. Here we go. A little squirty squirt. A little squirty squirt because the entire fuel system is empty. Hey, I should put that right on the lines for the ignition. That's a good spot for <laughs> Just that. Right where the spark is. Well, hopefully there's no spark right there. All right. Farley's excited. Look at that. Yeah. We got fuel to the filter already. We're just doing more squirts because I'm too lazy to pull it over 50 times. Two carbs. Almost. Yeah, this one's going to carve. Should be running next time. Curves. Still filling, yep. That last one is still not quite there. This one's solid. That one's got one bubble. Lots of bubbles in there. Yeah. It'll go. Change your side. So I had plenty of lube in the in the crankcase before we started, and the squirt bottle was pre-mix, but still we're gonna get the oil primed up now. We made her run, so we're dressing her up, getting rid of the crappy rusty skis, put some nice plastics on because I sure like them on the Indy 600. And a couple other things, but we're not going to show them that right now. No, no. Hold up. We'll get the sled, we'll get it all dressed up, and then we'll show them all that. I think it's time to take the grape ape out for a rip and see how it works.
first test hit was phenomenal, but I need to put Farley away before I can really get after this thing. Come here, Farley. That isn't worth a celebratory beer. I don't know what is. So uh, this thing rips. I couldn't be happier with it. This track really hooked up nice. The skis steer good. It runs great and uh, sure gets out of the hole. Yeah, pretty happy. No Farley's were harmed in the making of this video. Farley's greatest joy in life is to run with a snowmobile or a dirt bike or next to an ATV or whatever. She's done it her whole life. She's born to run. I had to let her run at least once around the yard or she would have probably, you know, I don't know, she would have just went bonkers locked up in the shop if I didn't give her at least one lap. So uh, with that said, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, I know it doesn't have a dash pad. I got to source one out. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, thanks to all the patrons. A little worried about the patrons' names up there. Um, those are the 5 and $10 a month tier patrons. So uh, they're the big shots when you see that. And uh, 
you know, I shoot these videos ahead of time and I add the names as I'm editing the videos. So we just got another patron today. So sorry if your name was, uh, is not on, if you're already a patron and you're not on this video or, or whatever's happening, I, you know, I can't go back and change the videos once they're made. But uh, thanks to the patrons, you guys are, are huge. Uh, you really, uh, your support of the channel and your support of me and Dennis and Lonnie really keeps us going, keeps us making these videos. Um, other ways to support, well, subscribe, of course. I know that more than half the people watching these videos aren't subscribed and it costs you nothing. There's no obligation. It doesn't harm you in any way. It doesn't make anything different happen. If you're watching my videos, they're already popping up in your YouTube feed and that'll just continue if you hit subscribe. That's all, that's all it does. So uh, also you, there's the PO box if you wanna mail Farley some dog treats. Come here, Farley, come here. I don't know why she runs off camera like that. So if you wanna send her some dog treats, that's cool. And uh, also uh, there's PayPal if you wanna just make a one-time donation for beers and pizzas for the guys. So uh, with that said, the grape ape's not done. I've got more work I wanna do. I'm gonna rebuild the front suspension. Obviously I need a handlebar pad. Maybe I need to fix my thumb warmer since it looks like that got broke. But uh, you know, minor things. I'll bring you back for the front suspension. We'll do an update, but you should be seeing it on some rides even as it is before I get the front suspension redone. So uh, I guess it's back to the bullwhip now. See you on the trails. <laughs>